The new constitution proposed by Tunisian President Kai Saeed has been approved in a referendum as per preliminary results. 94.6% of voters adopted the constitution, according to numbers released by the Tunisian Independent Higher Election Authority. The referendum was held on July 25 amid widespread calls for boycott by opposition parties and civil society. It took place exactly a year after President Kai Saeed sacked former Prime Minister Hisham Mashishi. In the subsequent months, he assumed more power. He also sacked a large number of judges after accusing them of inefficiency and harbouring terrorists. The draft constitution proposed on June 30 by Saeed faced immense criticism from all sections of the country. Critics said it was a power grab by Saeed. Tunisia's opposition attributed the low voter turnout to illegitimacy of the referendum. Saeed has claimed that low turnout will not affect the prospects of the referendum. The new constitution will replace the existing one that was framed following the Tunisian Revolution of 2011. It will give the president more powers over legislation and the judiciary. Parties such as Islamist Enhada, Democratic Progressive Party, Free Disturian Party and the Workers' Party of Tunisia have been leading various campaigns asking the people to boycott the referendum. They argue that the process through which the new constitution was drafted is not democratic but illegitimate. The proceedings of the committee which drafted the constitution have also been questioned on the grounds that its appointment was arbitrary. The committee was not allowed to consult any political party while drafting the constitution. Despite being invited, Tunisia's largest union, the Tunisian General Labour Union, boycotted the committee's consultation, asserting that the dialogue was arbitrary and unilateral. The main sort of thrust is that it will be basically uh, doing away with what had been a divided executive between the president and the prime minister. Uh, and it will be giving all of the power to, to the presidency. Um, in, in, we'll see that there is still a parliament, uh, but it seems that its powers are uh, vastly reduced. Um, there seems to be very few checks on the presidency. Uh, actually, uh, one of the uh, advisors who was involved in the drafting of this version, this draft, uh, has given an interview uh, in, in where he's actually condemned the final version. He says that the version he presented to the president, all of the checks that were there have been reduced and it's not no longer just a hyper presidential system, but uh, he says that it really is a, a dictatorial system. And that's uh, it's one of the criticisms we've seen from many political parties. Um, that said, uh, human rights are still protected within the, uh, the, the new um, uh, draft constitution, um, but many of the institutions and institutional checks that were there to really guarantee them seem to have been taken away. Uh, and that seems to be the, the main concern that we've heard from, from human rights activists. There are no guarantees of independent, um, some of the independent uh, uh, state bodies uh, that previously had been assured uh, by the constitution, whether that's the um, higher electoral board, or whether that's a, um, an anti-corruption uh, authority, um, even uh, uh, there's question marks over um, the regulatory of uh, a board for uh, broadcasting um, in, in, in media. And so these are certainly some, some concerns that, uh, that people have. Um, you know, it's also, uh, at, at the moment, I can tell you that the, the, the debate over uh, uh, the referendum is, is, is for them, people who are supporting it um, really are not sort of supporting it on the merits of the constitution. They're supporting it either um, as a way to sort of say that we don't want to go back to um, rule under a parliamentary system where the, the main party, the biggest party was the Anahta Islamist party, or they're just saying we want to basically give a vote of confidence to President Kai Syed, uh, but really not, uh, not engaging with the, uh, the substance of the constitution. Large-scale protests have been going on in Tunisia since the president's power grab last year. Last week, several thousands took to the streets in the capital, Tunis, against the referendum. The police forces tried to brutally suppress the demonstration and arrested scores of human rights activists and members of the Workers' Party of Tunisia. Alongside the political conditions, Tunisia is witnessing a major economic crisis and the past few years have seen increased frustration amongst labour and social movements. Kai Saeed has continued neoliberal economic policies and has not been able to manage the crisis. Um, there was an amnesty bill uh, after the revolution in 2011 that took many years. Uh, to, it was finally passed, but uh, activists who had pushed back against it had, had basically succeeded in limiting it to, to amnesty only for corrupt officials of the Ben Ali era, but not for corrupt businessmen. Um, and the president basically extended amnesty uh, in the hopes that this would uh, convince these businessmen to, to, to bring uh, money back in in the form of investment. Now, it's, it's really not clear that that's, that's the case. It's not clear that there's any sort of uh, transparency or accountability in terms of actually uh, tracking that wealth. He's made a few sort of, uh, um, let's say, uh, at the rhetorical level, um, um, 
payons to uh, tracking down illicit capital flow that has gone out of the country to uh, a debt audit, but he hasn't taken any substantive steps. And in the meantime, he's uh, continuing negotiations with the IMF for a new uh, loan of something like $4 billion, uh, which, um, you know, in many cases, we're hearing people say there, there really isn't an alternative. Even, even people who are very critical of the IMF are saying that Tunisia is, at the moment, unless, unless there's significant um, debt forgiveness, um, unless there's, there's really a, 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 a very strong steps towards economic, uh, sorry, energy and uh, food sovereignty, uh, there really isn't an alternative at this current moment to a new IMF loan. But it doesn't seem that the, the president has, has really tried to, to, to offer alternatives that are, that are really substantive to, to the way that Tunisia was going before economically.